Hello everybody and welcome to another A plus 1102 uh, lesson with a practice exam at the end where I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this exam objective. We're going to look at exam objective 2.2 protocols and encryption and authentication. So that is pretty much everything in this section for this dot point over here to the left. By the end of this video, you should know everything you need to know really at a broad scale about these topics and you should be feel uh, feeling confident tackling some practice exam questions on this content as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight to it with WPA2 and WPA3. So when it comes to wireless internet connections, there are two things we're going to cover today. There's protocols and there's encryption. We're going to start off with protocols and there's two that you need to know about for your exam. You need to know about Wi-Fi protected access two, and you also need to know about Wi-Fi protected access three. So we'll start off with two. Wi-Fi protected access two is the current industry standard for wireless security. It offers significant improvements over its pretty predecessor, WEP. You don't need to know anything really about WEP. You just need to know that that is the older one and WPA2 was the newer one that came in to replace it and is much more secure. It's more secure. Uh, WPA2 does support two different encryption options. Now you do need to know about these different forms of encryption. Uh, the first one is TKIP or Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. This one is an older encryption method and it's used in earlier versions of WPA2. It does offer some protection, but it has some known vulnerabilities. So that's why if you have the option, you want to be using advanced encryption standard if you can, which is AES. This is a stronger and more recommended encryption option for WPA2 and WPA3, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, it provides robust protection for your wireless traffic. So that's the one that you're going to want to choose. It's worth noting that there are other encryption protocols, but for the sake of this particular exam, you don't actually need to know about those really in any level of detail. Just understand for future exams, they do exist. But for now, you only need to know about these two. All right, so that's just a little note I wanted to throw in there. Moving on to WPA3, as we can probably imagine, 3 is a higher number than 2, therefore WPA3 is more secure than WPA2. So this is the, wire, the latest wireless security protocol designed to address vulnerabilities found in WPA2. It offers several enhancements. So some of those enhancements are simplified device onboarding. So it's streamlined setup process for a wider range of devices. It has stronger encryption, which is obviously important. It utilizes the latest security suite. So this is what I was talking about in the last slide. It, it enables an encryption protocol called SAE or simultaneous authentication of equals. This is stronger than the one we talked about before, which is AES. Simultaneous authentication of equals is a better encryption protocol than AES. That being said, you don't need to know about SAE specifically for your exam. What you might need to know is that Wi-Fi Protected Access 3 does support higher level encryption protocols and therefore does enable a better level of security. So you don't need to specifically know about SAE. You just need to understand the concept that WPA3 is more secure. And one of the reasons for that is because it supports better encryption protocols. So, so long as you understand that, you should be okay. It also offers enhanced protection against brute force attacks. So it makes it more difficult for attackers to guess your Wi-Fi password by running scripts, um, either dictionary attacks or brute force attacks. We don't need to get into specifically what that is until your security plus really but just for the sake of this understand that it is more secure due to the support it has for higher levels of encryption protocols and uh, the defense against brute force attacks as well so just know wi-fi protected access 3 is more secure than wi-fi protected access 2 which is somewhat intuitive as 3 is a higher number than 2 all right so if that's making sense so far then we're on the right track now We've got those different encryption protocols that we talked about. So just, just again, I'll go over them in the same order that they're in the exam objectives. So we have encryption. What is encryption? Basically what it does is it scrambles your data. In this particular contents, we're context, we're talking about wireless data. So it makes it unreadable to anyone intercepting it. So if anyone tries to read what you are sending over the network, 
you will see your data. You Like if you type a sentence that says, I love brown dogs, you'll see I love brown dogs. But if it's encrypted, the person intercepting will see it as a jumbled combination of random numbers and syllables, for example, right? So uh, numbers and symbols, for example. So they can't read what you're sending. Some methods of scrambling that are stronger than others. TKIP is considered less secure due to some potential vulnerabilities. AES is currently the strongest encryption standard for Wi-Fi networks in relation to your exam, right? Again, you don't need to know about simultaneous authentication of equals. Out of these two that you need to know about for your exam, AES is the strongest. So I'm trying to keep it really exam focused here. Yes, there are other stronger encryption protocols, but for your exam, if you were taking a question that says, what is the strongest encryption protocol? You'll likely be having to choose potentially between some other random options that aren't actually encryption protocols or are like trick answers and these two. And out of these two, the strongest one is AES. It's supported by WPA2 and WPA3. So you might get a question asking you something to the effect of, what is the best combination? WPA2 with AE3, sorry, AES or WPA3 with AES or WPA2 with TKIP, etc. right? And just know you'd wanna go for WPA3 for security and you'd wanna go with AES for security because it's the most secure wireless protected access version and it's the most secure encryption protocol. So if that's making sense, again, we're on the right track. Hopefully, hopefully we're doing all right so far. We also have authentication. So there's different methods of authenticating yourself to a network, of telling this network, hey, I am who I say I am. And we're going to go through some of the key differences between the different methods of authentication that you will need to know for your exam and how you can tell them apart. And also in what circumstance you might want to use one over the other. So first of all, authentication, a brief rundown. We talked about Wi-Fi protected access. These define the encryption methods for securing your wireless data. Authentication methods determine how users and devices prove their identity. So that's what I was saying before. Authentication is how we prove that we are who we say we are uh, in order to access the network. So let's have a look at some common ones or specifically the ones you'll need to know for your exam. The first one is RADIUS or Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. So this is a widely used centralized authentication protocol for wired and wireless networks. It's widely used and it uses a central server. So that's already uh, two key things we need to take note of. RADIUS Server Authenticates uses against a central database. So the RADIUS Server has a database. You might log in. It will run your login details against the database that it has to see if there are any matches. It's called the, uh, an example of that is the Active Directory. After receiving the login credentials from a network access point, so it sent your login credentials, it runs your credentials against the database to see if there's any matches for what you've typed in. It offers good scalability and simplifies user management for large networks. So if we've got a large network and we're planning on scaling in the future, Radius might be a good way to go in terms of authentication. It might require additional infrastructure setup, so you will need to set up a RADIUS server. That's something to consider, right? You are going to need to actually configure that. Here's a key one. You're going to need to know this. It uses symmetric key encryption for authentication. What this means is there's a shared secret key that is pre-configured on both the RADIUS client and the RADIUS server. So the network device trying to log in to the, to the server has a key and the RADIUS server has a key and it's the same key, it's symmetrical, it's identical. During authentication, the client and server use this shared key to encrypt and decrypt messages. So, so long as you understand that the RADIUS server uses symmetric key encryption, you'll largely be able to distinguish between the two, okay? Another method of authentication is TACAX Plus or Terminal Access Controller Access Control System Plus. <laughs> I know it's a mouthful. Um, this is, again, it's a centralized authentication protocol that's similar to RADIUS, often used in network security critical environments. It provides more granular control over network access and user permissions compared to RADIUS. So, right, we're already starting to see some distinctions. TACAX Plus, we have more granular control over our network access, over our user permissions. We can change things in more detail. We can see things in more detail. It's more granular. It offers additional features like authorization, auditing, and accounting. So there are some additional features that come with TACAX Plus that we can see there. And it's typically more complex to configure and manage than RADIUS. So if you have a large 
infrastructure that you want to be able to scale easily and set up simply, Radius might be for you. If you want those additional options for that granular user control and you're okay with it being a little bit more complex to set up, TACX Plus might be for you. So already we're, trying, we're starting to see some of the things that we might want to toss up. And here's another key point. TACX Plus employs a combination of symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption. So it uses symmetric key encryption and asymmetric key encryption. That's in bold for a reason. It's important for you to know that. It's going to be one of the key distinguishing factors. For authentication, TACX Plus can optionally use symmetric key encryption, similar to RADIUS, with a shared secret key between the client and server. However, it can also leverage asymmetric key encryption using digital certificates for added security. Okay, so we can use symmetric key encryption or asymmetric key encryption. We have that option there available to us, which again, kind of flows into that additional for uh, the, the, the more granular control. You have more options, right? a little bit more complex, but there's more options there. So that's something to consider. And finally, we have Kerberos. Now, this is a secure authentication protocol commonly used in wired networks, but can be implemented for wireless access in some enterprise environments. It relies on a central server, and this is called a key distribution center or KDC. Make sure you know, remember that about Kerberos. Think about Kerberos uses KDC, they both start with K, uh, to issue encrypted tickets for user and device authentication. So they issue encrypted tickets for user device and authentication, okay? It provides mutual authentication, both user and network resource are verified. It relies on a trusted third party server, which is the KDC that we just talked about, and utilizes a concept called ticket granting tickets or TGTs with temporary shared keys for authentication. Kerberos itself doesn't directly use traditional symmetric or symmetric, uh, asymmetric encryption. It leverages a combination of these concepts within the ticket system. So, right, we've got a couple of key distinguishing factors here. Uh, Kerberos doesn't use asymmetric or symmetric uh, explicitly. It uses the KDC to issue encrypted tickets. So that's going to be one thing that will help you distinguish it from the other two that we've talked about. All right, so hopefully we're, it's kind of making sense and we're getting ahead around it. This one's a little bit finicky. There's a lot of little tiny details that we do need to remember, but um, you know, we will get there and we will smash our way through this exam. Don't you worry about it. And of course, we have the concept of multi-factor authentication. Um, we should be somewhat familiar with this by now if you've done your 1101, but we'll go over it again because it is in the exam objectives. So. Multi-factor authentication is just an extra layer of security beyond usernames and passwords. You're essentially using at least two different methods of verifying yourself. So not just a password, it's going to be um, maybe a password and a hardware token. It's gonna to be a combination of something you know, something you have, and something you are. So you might have to type in your password and then use your fingerprint as well. So it's not just something that you know that you might write down somewhere and could be stolen that someone could pick up and, and then use to pretend they're you because even if they get that, they also need your fingerprint. There are multiple factors. So it's going to be a combination, something you know, something you have, something you are. Using a password and a pin is not technically multi-factor. You're using two things, but they're within the same category of something you know. You have to have two things, each of which is from a different category, all right? So that's the key thing for multi-factor authentication. Something you know plus something you have or something you know plus something you are, et cetera, all right? Two of those factors to authenticate. It increases the difficulty for unauthorized access attempts and can be implemented on top of other authentication methods like Radius or Kerberos, all right? So you can use Radius, Kerberos to authenticate and also have multi-factor authentication at the same time on top of that, which is pretty cool. Now, how do you know which one of these to choose for your infrastructure? We went through a couple of things, but let's just go through some broad uh, ideas as, as to how we can try to choose the right one. The first one, your network size and security needs. Radius is good is a good balance for many networks. TACX Plus provides more granular control for high security environments. That's what we were talking about before, right? Radius, highly scalable, 
pretty simple to set up, relatively speaking. TACAX TAC Plus, sorry, a little more difficult to set up, but uh, does offer that more granular control for additional details. Do you have uh, existing infrastructure? If your network already uses a central authentication server, it's going to be compatible with Radius already. So that might be, again, a more simple way to go and would take less effort. There's less opportunity cost there, I suppose. Ease of management. Again, Radius is generally easier to set up and manage compared to TACAX Plus and uh, mobile device compatibility. Kerberos might have compatibility limitations with some mobile devices. It's typically, again, as we said, for a wired network, all right? So again, just go back, make sure you understand the differences for all of those, and you're able to see when would you use each of them in which scenario. Now, it's time to get into our questions. The first question coming up uh, right about now, and that question reads, Rajesh has decided he is never going to allow his cat pictures to be released by hackers again, and has decided uh, dedicated his life to finding the most secure encryption method. Which of the following is he most likely to select, and what wireless security protocol is it associated with? A. TKIP with WPA3 B. SSH with WPA2 C. AES with WPA3 or D. TKIP with WPA2 Pause the video. If you need more time, your answer coming. Right about now, three, two, one, let's go. The answer is C, A, E, S with W, P, A, 3. So essentially, we wanted the most secure versions of encryption and the most secure uh, W, P, A version. So we talked about the different encryption uh, methods slash protocols, and A, E, S, for the sake of your exam, is the most advanced one that you need to know about. TKIP is in less secure, shall I say, AES is more secure. And again, of course, WPA3 is more secure than WPA2. So of course, Rajesh would want WPA3 with the most secure encryption protocol for the ones you need to know for your exam anyway, uh, AES. All right, feel free to pause and read through the rest of that there. But um, if you didn't get that right, maybe go back and have a look at the video. Okay, the next question reads, which of the following protocols only uses symmetric key encryption for authentication and is commonly used for network access control? A, Radius, B, TACAX Plus, C, Kerberos, or D, all of the above. Pause the video if you need more time. Your answer coming in three, two, one. Now, that answer is A, Radius. So again, this one came down to knowing the difference between the what methods each option uses. So if you knew that radius only uses symmetric, you would have been able to get that one right. Simultaneously, if you knew that TACAX uses symmetric and slash or asymmetric, you would be able to rule that one out, right? Because the question read only uses symmetric key encryption. Well, TACAX doesn't only use that. It can also use asymmetric key encryption, as we now know. So that can't be the, the answer. And we know Koboros doesn't use uh, symmetric key encryption necessarily. It uses that um, that ticket sharing server, the centralized ticket sharing server. There will be a question on that later, so I won't give the name of that away. But so long as you know the differences between those two, you should be able to differentiate, really. So if you got that one wrong, again, head back, have a look through the video again. The next question, here we go, reads, Kerberos relies on a trusted third-party server for authentication. This server is known as the... A, domain controller, B, authentication server, C, key distribution center, or KDC, or D, radius server. Pause the video. If you need more time, your answer coming up in three, two, one. Now, that answer is C. It is called the key distribution center, the KDC. You will need to know that for your exam. Just think Kerberos starts with a K, KDC starts with a K as well. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, the next question reads, TACAX Plus offers additional features beyond authentication, such as authorization and accounting. What does accounting refer to in this context? A, user password management. B, tracking network resource usage by users. C, monitoring login attempts. Or D, reporting on failed authentication attempts. Pause the video. If you need more time, I'm going to go ahead and get to your answer in three, two, one. Now, the answer is B, tracking network resource usage by users. So I know I didn't actually explicitly cover that in the video, but uh, just think about what the word 
accounting refers to. So if you're accounting, you're accounting for something or you're counting something. So just understanding really on a broad level, what you're going to need to know is that TACX Plus offers a higher degree of detail in, in what it can give you. Remember, it's more complicated to set up really, but it also offers an additional level of detail for you to uh, have at your disposal. So that's on a broad spectrum what I, what I would like you to know before heading into that exam. If you found this video useful and you did in fact enjoy it, uh, I'm gonna get you to go ahead and head over to journeydecipher.com. So over there, I've got my learning guide, which breaks everything in the exam down that you need to know not only by exam objective, but also by each dot point within each exam objective. And for each of those, you get comprehensive notes, active recall questions, as well as practice exam questions, just like you've seen here in this video. Once you've gone through the whole document, you're pretty much gonna be ready. But just to super test yourself, you can head over to the online quiz database where you can take a simulated exam experience as well. So basically I'm guiding you through this entire exam, uh, not going out of the scope of the exam, telling you exactly what you need to know and nothing more so that you're efficiently able to use your time and get ready to pass this thing. Here's what people have said about my content, about my learning guide for the 1101 previously. And for the 1102, I've pretty much taken my learning guide for the 1101 and put it on steroids. So it's so much better than the 1101 one. And this is what people are saying about the last one. They're saying your learning guide is actually goaded. I don't comment a lot, but it helps with organized information and helps me piece things together more easily. Thank you so much. Update, your notes helped me pass my test today. Thank you. I downloaded your learning guide already and I can see it will help immensely with studying. I tried some other popular resources but struggled absorbing the material. Will you have one for the 1102? Hey, that's what you're looking at now. I do have one. Head over there and grab it, journey to uh, So again, break it down all by each dot point within each exam objective. I have comprehensive notes. I have practice exam questions, active recall questions, and I've also got that online um, multiple variety of simulated examination experiences, okay? So with that being said, uh, I also have performance-based questions over there too. And don't be afraid of the $30 here. That's Australian dollars. So if you're in America, that's like, that's like chump change to you guys with the conversion rate, right? So if you wanna be as happy as this guy and look as excited as he does after you pass your exam, head over to juniordecipher.com, grab that. If you don't want them, that's totally cool. You know, this is just like a, an option, if you want everything you need for your exam right now and you don't want to wait, head over there now. If you can wait till my next video, hey, I'll see you in my next video. So with that being said, guys, I will see you then and I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video.